Our board's primary mission is to make sure the people of Minnesota receive the best possible emergency medical care when and where they need it. Over the years, experience has shown that reliable two-way radio communication is essential to making that possible in rural Minnesota, in our small towns, and in our metro areas. In the next few minutes, we'd like to introduce you to the emergency medical radio system, which you'll be a part of when you use your two-way unit. Although quite small, this radio will be your link to resources miles away, including dispatch centers, hospital emergency departments, and other public safety providers. Once you understand the system behind it, you'll see that this little radio is a lot more powerful than it looks. We learned a lot of hard lessons from that September morning in New York City several years ago. Among the most important, the chaos that results when first responder radio systems can't communicate with one another. Although September 11th is the most public example of interagency communications issues, almost any incident in history has brought its own interoperability communications challenges. There have been a number of memorable events involving multiple agencies right here in Minnesota. There have been tornadoes in Comfrey and St. Peter, Maple Grove and Hugo, to name a few. There was an anhydrous ammonia leak involving a rail car in Lake City in March of 2007. The Cottonwood school bus crash in February 2008. Building explosions. Some of those have occurred in locations like St. Cloud and Ramsey. And of course, the southeastern Minnesota flooding in 2008. The biggest challenge in any event that results in a multi-agency response is always communication. This is a result of radio systems not being able to communicate with one another. Contrast the communications challenges so clearly demonstrated on September 11th where an 800 megahertz trunked radio system was not being utilized with the rapid, well-coordinated multi-agency response to the 35W bridge collapse in Minneapolis, where the 800 megahertz public safety radio system, or armor system, was in use during that rush hour disaster. Radio traffic on the Minnesota Regional Public Safety Radio System doubled, but the communications to handle the event still functioned well. The fire department was able to communicate with the police department, Emergency medical personnel coordinated ambulances and were able to communicate with hospital emergency rooms. Despite the confused situation on both banks of the river, first responders were able to quickly put assets where they were needed and achieve control of the situation. The fast response and coordination was made possible by the powerful, interoperable, disaster-resistant digital trunked public safety radio system, also known as Armor a system like the one you may become part of every time you turn on and use your mobile handheld radio. The shared statewide public radio system, Armor, was created to help agencies cope with increasing problems of the current VHF, UHF systems. Those problems have been identified as lack of interoperability, frequency congestion, interference, uneven coverage, and outdated equipment. A portion of the Twin Cities metro region has been utilizing the system since 2002. The Armour system is currently being built out statewide. This statewide build-out of the infrastructure is proposed to be substantially completed with 75% mobile coverage by 2010 and 95% county-by-county mobile coverage by December 2012. Regional Advisory Committees, or RACs, comprised of users of the system and regional radio boards comprised of elected officials have been established throughout the state to guide the implementation and integration of local enhancements to the statewide system. The Armour system is based on an open, non-proprietary standard created by the Association of Public Safety Communications Officers, also known as the APCO P25 standard. The system and all subscriber equipment that is requested to be put on the system goes through rigorous testing to assure that it is compatible and meets the high standards of the armor system. This technology ensures that the system will not become obsolete. The armor system utilizes the most advanced technology to create a system that provides a high degree of availability, thorough coverage, clear and highly intelligible audio, reliability, and enhanced safety for public safety personnel and those seeking emergency services. 
This added safety is ensured by the knowledge that communications are being confirmed by the permit to talk tone. The permit to talk tone indicates to the user that a communication channel has been secured. In industry terms, your handheld radio is a PTT unit or push to talk radio. Although you will be communicating on talk groups rather than assigned frequencies, the Armor system has the capability to leverage both the 700 and 800 megahertz band of radio frequencies that are licensed and assigned by the Federal Communications Commission. In Minnesota, the Armor system infrastructure is owned by the Department of Transportation, which maintains much of its infrastructure. However, the system has layers and there are local compliant subsystems that make up the Armor system. Everyone benefits from sharing the resources and infrastructure. On the electronic spectrum that includes cell phones, FM radio and broadcast television, the 700 and 800 megahertz bands are located just above the band where the UHF or ultra-high frequency television stations used to broadcast. In the next few minutes, we'd like to give you some basic information about what happens when you power up and communicate on your handheld radio. And we'd like to take you on a tour of the other end of the system to demonstrate the capabilities it brings to your handheld radio. We'll also talk about using your radio to gain maximum utilization of the system's power. When we talk about system power, we're not talking about signal strength. Although it can communicate with portable units throughout its service area, and eventually across the state, the Armour system is powerful because it is redundant, expandable, and is capable of bringing together unlimited combinations of first responder units for clear, reliable, interoperable communication. The handheld radio you will carry on the job has limited transmitting power, but can reach one of several relay towers that are carefully sighted throughout your operating area. When you key your microphone, your radio triggers a computer-based search of available towers, looking for the best signal. When the connection is complete, the radio will beep like this, notifying its user that a communications channel is secured and they are free to communicate. In addition to providing clear signals, multiple towers give the armor system depth and redundancy and make them disaster resistant. If something happens to one tower, signals simply move to another. In most cases, parallel computer and communications centers further strengthen the system. Unlike older analog radio systems, which put your voice on a modulated carrier wave, your handheld codes your transmissions into digital data packets, keeping them free from static and extraneous electronic noise, no matter where you're located, much like comparing vinyl records to CDs. 800 megahertz systems differ from analog radio systems in another very important way. Rather than operating on a specific assigned frequency or frequencies, which only allows for one user at a time to utilize a frequency, this digital radio system is trunked, meaning all system users share a cluster of frequencies, which are computer assigned when needed. In the Twin Cities metro area, for example, there are 184 channels shared by EMS, police, fire, hospitals, and other users in the seven county metro area. The trunked radio system allows for more efficient communications as users are not limited by all communications occurring on one frequency. In the event of an emergency situation, such as the 35W bridge collapse, where responders needed to talk to units outside their talk group Dispatchers at a communication center quickly formed new tactical groups to meet the situation. When you key your microphone, your unit connects with a control channel, which then assigns your transmission to an available tower and frequency. Statewide EMS. When you let go of the microphone button, that frequency goes back into the mix for use by someone else. During a typical exchange between an EMT and a communication center, information is likely to be exchanged on a number of frequencies. We also mentioned that your radio system provides interoperability with other systems in Minnesota and throughout the U.S. Another word for this might be compatibility. Your handheld unit and your 800 megahertz radio system are designed to operate with any other similar system in Minnesota. 
With just a few mouse clicks, dispatchers at your communication center can connect your handheld radio to another unit across town or across the state. Two, three, your cross is complete. The statewide infrastructure build-out plan includes over 300 tower sites spread across the state. Two-car accident mutually request by Lakeview EMS out to County Road 8, timeout 2008. Medicating on dispatch, myself and 82 cabs of These towers talk to each other and relay your voice data packets to the communication center and other units and transmit return information. Your county may or may not decide to upgrade their current system to operate on the Armour public safety radio system. Even if your agency does not upgrade to the Armour system, you will still be able to communicate with agencies that are on the system. This would be accomplished by requesting a patch from the communication center that has the capabilities to patch or link the radio systems together. This is accomplished by a few quick clicks of the mouse. When the patch is complete, the radio system will accept the VHF signal and rebroadcast it on the 800 megahertz talk group and vice versa. If your agency upgrades to the Armour Public Safety Radio System, you will learn more specific information about talk groups from your agency, county communications center, or regional radio board. Perhaps the most powerful thing about the Armour system is that it is forward compatible, or in computer terms, it is upgradable. The system in use in the Twin Cities metro area is eight years old and is easily able to keep up with improvements in technology and needed expansion because of forward compatibility. This software-based system can easily accommodate upgrades and will eventually be able to accommodate data. The Armour system will continue building out into all regions of Minnesota. As this occurs, the Minnesota Emergency Medical Services Regulatory Board believes that these improved communications will enhance the delivery of emergency medical care throughout Minnesota. Hello, I'm Katherine Burkmore, Executive Director of the Minnesota Emergency Medical Services Regulatory Board. Our agency hopes that you found the information on the statewide public safety radio system otherwise known as the Armour System, helpful. During your career, you may never be involved in an event such as what occurred on September 11th or a major bridge collapse. However, it is also certain you will never have an average day. No matter what you face, you will know that your handheld radio and the armor behind it will remain a powerful, reliable tool today and into the future.